All right. I think we'll uh, we'll get started here. We'll at least get started with some introductions that'll give time for other people to come in. And so, yeah. Hello, welcome everybody to our to the our Discord AMA today. We're we're where we are looking to just uh, give the opportunity for community members to ask some questions and uh, also for an introduction to one of the newest members of our team, Yulia. And I'll, Yulia, I'll give you a moment to introduce yourself. Uh, I just want to give a quick overview of well, what the structure is going to look like for this call. So we're going to go, we posted uh, last week a thread for people to ask their questions. And so we had some community members asking some great questions. And today we're going to address those questions and uh, go, go through most of them. Some of them will be deferring to when Roland is available to come join for a future AMA. Um, but, uh, and then if time permits at the end, we'll invite people to come up on stage and ask their questions if they, uh, if the, if we haven't answered it yet, um, if, or if you have anything else you'd like to add, if you didn't po post a question in the thread. And so, yeah, maybe just to start with some introductions. Uh, I think most people here know me, at least. I'm JD. I'm uh, in the community operations of Agoric Opco. You see me often around Discord, Telegram, in the forum. And um, yeah, so Dean, I'll pass it to you first if you want to just give a quick intro. Uh, I, I would say, I think most people know me. I'm Dean Tribble, um, CEO of Agoric and one of the technical founders. So uh, uh, you've probably heard me talk wa wax poetic on the vision and the technology at various times. Um, so I will hand it off to Yulia, but before she talks, uh, you know, so, so um, we know we've wanted, you know, deep strategic marketing uh, help um, and expertise from someone who has been there before. Um, uh, Yulia founded a CMS company that was bought by Hootsuite. Um, they, you know, she did uh, product marketing at Google for several years. Um, she was head of the go-to-market um, for crypto at PayPal, and then was CMO at Partizia Blockchain, which was a, which was a privacy-focused blockchain in the um, in the EU, and author of a book on Web3 marketing. And so when when you know we explained orchestration, explained where we're at, and how we now had something that you know the market actually looked like they cared about, you know it was a great fit, and we're so excited to have Yulia uh, joining our team. So with that background, since you've heard lots about the technology, I will I will hand you off to Yulia. You're muted. Wait, you're muted. Yeah, there we go. Yes. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm very excited to be here. Uh, as Dan Dean mentioned, I've been in the Web3 space for about five years now, and I've always been dedicated to actually bringing the mainstream to Web3. Uh, I'm a big believer in the power of the uh, Web3 economy, and uh, I do see Agoric very well positioned to actually be a leader in the space and um, bring the goodness of the technology, of the blockchain technology to the space and to users' benefits. unmute myself um and so uh yeah I almost thank called you, you thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah Yulia we're all very excited to have you on the team uh, I can say as somebody who's been working with you so far it's been great and I'm looking forward to what's to come so I think what we'll start with uh Yulia wanted to just go over a uh a slide with some information about what's been going on what we're doing and things like that before we actually get to the questions. So I'm just going to share my screen real, real actually, quick. Actually, before I do that, let me jump in. You know, just so people know sort of strategy-wise, right? We, we Last year, we were very focused on going after Web2 developers. We learned a lot out of that. We built a lot of stuff for that. But um, but the the power, uh, you know, the, the and, and, you know, our strategy shifted at the beginning of this year for to chain abstraction because you know we have a long-term vision that includes sort of you know a, a, a enabling programmers across the world to be able to build smart contracts and so forth but but what the crypto industry needs right now is this chain abstraction right? is you know users want to access you know assets and services in web3 independent of the underlying chain and we've been focusing on that because we have a unique solution to that 
And it's so exciting that we can easily, vividly show what's different about the Agoric platform using orchestration. Um, and it applies to new and existing projects, so we can add value to existing projects without them having to move everything over into the into into our world. And so we're really simultaneously pushing on the technology that gets people there and leverages these unique features of our platform and engagement in that marketing narrative that really looks like a critical narrative for the 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 um, uh, crypto world and in general uh, adoption of crypto going forward. And so, um, you know, hence that whole branch of getting that narrative engagement um, is, is is something that 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 again back to why why we we're so happy Yulia joined us. So that is background for for you've heard a lot about the technical side before. Now you you can can provide you sort of the 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 overview of what we're doing marketing wise, which answers many of the questions people came up with and have been asking in the months before about what are you doing to get this this you know narrative engagement around Agoric, which is what we need to really be able to ramp up excitement over the platform. So with that as background, now the presentation you know it fits in context. And it speaks a lot about the unique technology created by the engineers at Agoric to solve the chain abstraction challenge. You know things like multi-block execution, timer services, and uh, async object messaging actually allow smart contracts to communicate with each other across different blockchains and enable applications that otherwise wouldn't be possible. Um, and um, this is what we do now. We, we bring to the market chain abstraction solutions and we make things that are impossible today in Web3 happen, like decentralized services, like sub subscription content platforms, gaming ecosystems, uh, insurance mar marketplaces or lending protocols that span across multiple blockchains. All, all these we are, we are now in the business of making impossible things happen. And uh, this is how I like to market. And I think that marketing categoric is now basically storytelling uh, of those impossible things made true. Uh, and the way we do this is with content, education, uh, demo experiences. And we've already started. You've probably seen in the, in the last few months um, that we've been very uh, active. Uh, JD, maybe we can move to the next slide. Uh, one month ago, we, we launched orchestration with the Big, big Bang. We were in uh, Brussels uh, in quite a few events. Uh, we've taken over Chain Abstraction Day, where we've co-organized an event with Nier, with the current leader in the space. And we, we were very visible uh, and trying to own the, the narrative fully ourselves. Um, Maybe next slide, we've uh, launched an early access program for builders. We started proactively marketing to builders that can demonstrate orchestration, offering them white glove support, prime access to, to preview access to, to features and um, financial support. And we review one by one the project ideas that uh, showcase best orchestration and decide where we can offer financial grants. And you might have seen our brand life a lot on uh, a lot of media and platforms in the past uh, months. So uh, with the orchestration launch, we've been uh, live on 79 publications from big to small. Uh, we've been on Milky Road. We've been on uh, uh, CoinGecko, um, on CoinDesk um, and, and continuing. Um, we've also um, we are moving forward with a lot of plans and a lot of um, uh, ideas and and um, more theatrical experiences for our uh, uh, community and for our um, other audiences. We are communicating at the same time to builders, to investors, and to the mainstream audience. I think we can continue now with taking some 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 of the questions that we've seen from the audience uh we'll cover uh, more marketing so maybe we can move to the questions and and uh see that we answer to everybody and yeah yeah for sure um okay i am unmuted uh yes we can we can get to some of the questions and um so yeah, uh, as I said, we asked the community to ask some questions and leave them in a thread. And so I'm actually just going to read out those questions. Uh, nothing has been changed about them other than maybe uh, some of the order that it's going to come across in. And so um, I'll start with the uh, uh, 
Uh, this one, I think this came from Oscar uh, Triple PM. You may see him in the crowd uh, in the channels. Um, so the tech behind uh, and team behind Agoric are amazing. What do you think it is going to take to get it being used widely? And I think, uh, Yulia, maybe this is a good one for you. There's some of both here. Um... You know, my 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 quick glib answer is orchestration, right? I mean, you know, this is the reason we chose it is because it shows vividly what's possible on a work that's simply impossible elsewhere. And I got to tell you, you know, and by vividly, what I mean is it's changed from we're doing outbound chasing people and going, no, no, JavaScript would be better to people coming to us and say, can you solve my problem? It sounds like you can solve my problem. And that's just so clearly much easier to program than everything we've been trying. And so... You know, so that's sort of the, the the important answer, and that's why we've been focusing on this. Is it really highlights our our differences that are powerful for people? But I know you've got a more complete answer, Yulia. So I'll let you dive in. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, with orchestration, we make it happen, and then we have a clear plan. And there are three things that I'd like to highlight that I think will bring us to the mainstream. So to make uh, our technology being widely used, we need a few outstanding applications live that address the chain abstraction use cases uh, that can actually bring us to the mainstream. Things like fast USDC, multi-chain yield ag aggregator, cross-chain single-click asset swapping and staking, um, all these kind of applications that we are working on today uh, have the mainstream vocation that we need to get our uh, tech out there and uh, widely used. Um, second thing, we need a slick developer experience. Um, we need developers to be easily able to get their hands on the algoric code components and play with them. Uh, and we have a North Star, which is the four days, applica four days application. Uh, so building a DApp in four days with Agoric. And the third yeah. thing, we need extensions to largest ecosystems like um, to the larger ecosystems like EVM, Solana, Avalanche. Right. One of the, you know, and to highlight that, I mean, our initial rollout of orchestration has, you know, takes advantage of IBC, takes advantage of the connectivity across uh, across Cosmos ecosystem that's easy in IBC, but the design is very much cross ecosystem. And so, you know, we are, we are you know, we are uh, focusing or we're, we're, we're targeting addressing Web3 cross chain and cross ecosystem use cases, not cross cost cross cosmos chain uh, uh, use cases. And you know that lets us leverage the power of you know applications inside of cosmos, but really move out into that much larger uh, uh, world. Now that will be not, you know we're building that th those connections out to the rest of the you know out, out of the other ecosystems over Q3 and Q4. So those will start to show up in in, in Q4. Um, but but you know that's very much the strategy is we're about chain abstraction for real. So, so, you know, agnostic from a user point of view about what ecosystem you're participating in, you know, you would be able, if you can mint an NFT, you'd like to be able to say, yeah, mint an NFT and this time I want it in Solana or I want it to, I want to buy something in ETH and then, and sell it over in, in Stargaze or what have you. And, uh, yeah, great. Thanks for those very detailed answers. Um, and on to the next question, which is uh, slightly related to the previous one. Um, so what marketing is planned for crypto communities, developers, and mainstream? And Yulia, I think this one I can definitely point to you. Um, yes. So... Um, I, I think I, I've already given a, an overview in the beginning with what we've been doing so far. Um, what I like to say is that the, the best marketing is when you let others speak, to, speak about you. And so um, what we are trying to do is to actually create programs where we have other parties speaking about Agoric. So uh, among things, the things planned, we have a thought leadership program around the chain abstraction narrative. Um, that's basically bringing Agoric into every conversation related to chain abstraction, every event that happens. We will be there, we continue to be there, and um, we want to position ourselves as leader, leaders. Um, in terms of community marketing, we are going to double down on incentives with um, advocates and expand the ambassador program. And we are going to introduce um, KOLs and uh, influencer marketing. Um, and then we are going to do marketing 
through. And you've and already done. I mean, we've already seen some of the KOL stuff, just to be clear, you know, working. Right. So. Um, and then uh, we are going to build a co-marketing program uh, to market ourselves through and via our, our partners. Um, we've mentioned uh, that we have uh, connections right now and we are discussing integrations with some uh, reputable players in the field and the best marketing will, will come when actually they will speak to their user bases about us. So that's our co-marketing program. Starting to work on that, we have started to demonstrate it with the Calypso launch in, in Nebula and um, moving forward with, with other partners. Um, it is, can I, can I inject something here? It, it is worth noting, you know, the, we have the, you know, one of the, one of the things that was exciting to me to realize when we first started talking to people about orchestration is that it's not just, you can only bring new apps to Agoric and build them on Agoric. And so we have to catch people at the new apps phase. It's people with existing apps, with existing customers, those existing customers are coming to them with use cases that are cross chain. And those people are coming to us. So they're inbound saying, we have this use case that we cannot solve and we can see how we could solve it with you. And that's the, that, and, 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 you know, that difference of, we don't have to make a speculative on, will there be users there, but rather, no, there are clear users there. And there's a clear use case where they know they can tell, you know, okay, it would improve our onboarding. If you could do this with orchestration, can you do that? And the answer is, yep, we can do that. Let's work together. Right. And so, um, so that's part of why we are, we're, we, you know, that that's that's changed the dynamic with respect to getting to partners. And so that answers some of the the, the questions in the side chat on the the thread as to what are those partners and how do you get to it. The answer, I mean, the earliest answer and the shortest time frame to actual users, from what we can tell, is exactly enhance existing things that have existing users with stuff that they can't currently do. I think Except that's also, uh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And I think that's also a uh, an answer to, to God's Hunter question about which markets do we want to focus on, Asia, Europe, America. Right now, we are not looking at a geo focus. We are going on a much more strategic targeted focus, focusing on marketing to big and reputable crypto players in the space that are actually international. They, they are worldwide players. So it's, it's not really about a geo focus going to the necessarily uh, to, to the broad market and t t talking about Agoric, it's very focused. Let, let's answer back to this request that we have and actually market for us to be visible to, to also these big players that want to um, integrate with us or that need solutions <laughs> like orchestration and need to hear about Agoric providing this kind of solutions. And the last thing that I wanted to mention was that um, with, with, we, we've started, you've seen with orchestration, the orchestration launch, we've, we've moved a bit, or, or it, it actually gave us the opportunity to do more than just technology marketing. We, we have a product marketing solution out there. And so it gave us the opportunity to do product marketing for it uh, and go out with a brand. We wanted to brand orchestration out there and the, the results of the brand campaign, you've probably seen us on Milk Road, on CoinGecko, uh, on Coindesk with, with um, actual sponsored um, uh, content. And we are seeing amazing results. Uh, we've seen 99 pieces from the influencers, um, more than 3.8 million uh, people in the audience reached. And uh, we see engagement up five times um, conversions up and we are seeing uh, significant builders and developers signing up to our early access pro program. So to our builders program. So the results and these are, are building up. Right. And these are building up those two legs of, you know, we're doing the engineering so people can do three impossible things before breakfast. Right. You know, OK, maybe not three. Um, but and we're doing the, 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 the activities to get narrative and, you know, narrative engagement where people understand the chain abstraction is important going you know into the the the, the next uh, uh crypto uh uh push and understand that agoric makes a difference there and and those two pieces are complementary to each other you kind of need to do both all and then they come you know this is the kind of thing where where the goal is they come together uh and by the way so that answers one of the other questions of are there any major potential partnerships in progress 
no names expected. Yes, we will not be giving names, but yes, absolutely, there are potential. Uh, uh, th there are um, uh, in partnerships in progress everywhere from you know kicking the tires to specking joint work, right on on product enhancement. And yeah, thank thank you for those answers. And I kind of covered through, you know, the also covered on what's been getting asked in the thread uh, in the chat bar. Um, and uh, Triple PM, I also see your comment um, uh, about um, how do we get people building. So maybe the next question uh, that came out of the spread. So why haven't you been able to attract more talented developers, and why will that change in the next six to eighteen months? Uh, Dean, I'll. Sure. Direct that one to you. Um, so a couple of reasons. Um, we didn't have a DevRels team, really. Um, and uh, and one of the things that changed in May was, you know, and this is and DevRels is really hard to recruit for. If you've not tried to recruit for that, you know, they're finding someone who's great is hard. And you know, it all came together and we got a couple of people that are great. So we now, you know, have have uh, several people working on dramatically improvement improving the 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 doc site, which you can see incremental improvement in the docs. And, you know, and, uh, you know, Giovanni presented workshop at Nebular that was well received. And that was sort of dipping our toe in to see what works for people and what do they learn. And we're continuing to iterate those and start doing virtual workshops. And so we now, you know, so that's part of it. The other is, um, you know, we were doing DevRels to the extent that we were, was out to the, you know, we were focused on the Web2 market, you know, so that wasn't something that was targeting Web3 developers and getting building on. We were trying to learn what does existing large scale, you know, the, the you know, the, the 17 million JavaScript developers out there, what do they need in order to get into Web3? Um, you know, and the answer is, I mean, we know what the answers are and we had to decide, do we pursue that or do we pursue this giant opportunity of really making a difference in what Web3 is able to deliver across chain? And that's, again, back to that, that so vividly showed the power of our platform and it was no longer an argument about, well, should you do Solidity because everyone is or should you do JavaScript, which is a whole lot easier, you know, those kinds of things. It's like, no, no, here's the thing you can do. That you can't do anywhere else, and it's direct, and it's clear how it's valuable to you. And so that was why we've been focusing on the orchestration thing first, and we will then, you know, leverage the the our power to get back to the larger community of developers once we've got, you know, well established, you know, business and activity and and you know growth and revenue and all those kinds of things from what you know the clearly to us valuable uh, uh, orchestration space or chain abstraction space. And so, yeah, triple PM. I hope those sort of the, that that addition helps to answer the question yeah. a little more in detail. Let me add one um, more thing. Why will it change? Yeah, sure. So the other thing is that was broad general purpose platform, which people cared about at the time, but it also didn't distinguish you. And back to by focusing on a particular area where our our differentiators and our value prop is clear, um, that it that makes for a much better. Uh, you know, much easier to communicate with people. Here's the value of building on Agoric. And that's reflected in, uh, again, now we've got inbound people saying, can I build on that? Can you do these things? You know, so we've got, you know, we've got the signal that, you know, I, it, it's not it's not product market fit until you actually see the deployment and things working, but it has that, it has that feel, right? You know, this is, this is, this is something that, that, that clearly has, has, has some legs and has some traction. Okay, now I'm done. And uh, and so yeah, we'll move on to the next question. Um, and I'll start with the comment that's included. Uh, so the tweets and articles seem to be a rinse and repeat of orchestration without any excitement to, or, and brand building, just technical reruns of the same thing again and again. What brand are you building? For example, just do it. Are we building the brand around Dean and his background, the tech, the future, etc.? cetera? Um, so Yulia, I'll point to you for this one. Yeah. Um, no, we are not building the, <laughs> the brand around Dean. We are building the brand around the applications built on Agoric. Um, so uh, a bit longer to go to market with that, waiting for, for, for uh, a few amazing wins, outstanding applications to, to actually uh, start showing that. But what we are pushing with right now is uh, a brand around uh, Agoric making impossible things happen. Um, we are actually 
very much right now building the, the brand, the n narrative positioning around chain abstraction and what we can do with chain abstraction. And I, I think that there's been a change in the past month. We've actually moved away quite a lot from the um, tweets around the technical abilities, and we are actually hyper focused on um, the value propositions of orchestration and uh, the user benefits. And the one, the two things that we're saying uh, and that are different from our competitors building on chain abstraction is that with orchestration, we are solving for chain abstraction for users. We are bringing one click experiences in the multi chain. But also, we are actually enabling much more valuable applications, more sophisticated applications to exist with the power of orchestration and building those seamlessly for, with the developers. So it's much more about use case enablement and value proposition uh, than what are the technical uh, features of the platform that ena enable that uniqueness of these uh, use cases. Uh, and yeah, thank you for that answer. Um, so next question, I, oh yeah, go ahead, Dave, if you want to chime in on that. I was just going to jump in, you know, because then I saw the message from Tribble PM. Just to be clear, you know, the Tribbles, you know, uh, 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 meme coin, NFT stuff, you know, that's a third party project, right? You know, that, that just sort of showed up. So I am delighted. I'm tickled and I own one, but you know, but, 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 but that's not a, that's not an agoric initiative. That's a community initiative. So. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you, Bob, for posting that picture. Yes. <laughs> so as said, I'm happy. I love, I, I love that that's happening. And, and people have pointed out that that's, that's valuable. And that's one of the directions for, you know, sort of permissionless growth and that sort of thing. But, but, but that's not Agoric building a brand around Tribble. <laughs> that's, that's a different Tribbles than me. <laughs> and they, they are very fun. We've got the emojis in the server that can be used anywhere. Yes. Uh, as Bob showed. Um, yes. So yeah, the next one, I'm gonna kind of combine two questions that are very similar. Um, so the first part, what products are possible to build on Agoric today that could have mainstream appeal? And then maybe to expand on that, are there any products that can only be built on Agoric, similar to how some products can only be built on Solana today? And Dean, this seems like a good one for you. So, uh, sorry, uh, uh, just repeat the starting of the question. I was distracted uh, well, by picking your tribbles. <laughs> uh, what products are possible to build on Agoric today that could have mainstream appeal? And then ah. the ex extension, are there any products that can only be built on Agoric? Right, right, right. So, um, uh, the, so um, the simple ones, I mean, you know, so, so Yulia pointed at some earlier, right? You know, fast USDC from ETH to, to, ETH to, ETH to Cosmos, sort of the, the, the across, if people are familiar with the cross, is a big, you know, USDC to USDC on layer twos. And, um, and, and it's a very specific vertical business that is relatively, you know, that, that, that actually implementing it on orchestration. I mean, it's a, it's a simple business built essentially as a, as a one shot orchestration example. Right, doing the equivalent thing to go from from the outside world, or rather from ETH in particular, onto Cosmos. That's a that's a simple but important orchestration play. You know, we've talked a lot of times about go from you know I've got USDC and I want staked Adam, or I want to buy NFT, or I want staked Build, or staked Celestia, or liquid staked something. Right, those are these simple use cases that people are doing. You know across the board thousands and thousands of times a day. Um, and they're really damn hard is you have to manually navigate this connected world by hand carrying your assets around. So those are the low hanging use cases where once we get a couple of those, it becomes clear that no, no, you, you don't need, you know, bespoke ones for each scenario. That's a general orchestration use case that can be easily solved generally. And that's powerful, right? So that's some of the simple low hanging cases, right? Um, you know, but you quickly go to the, 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 the ones which are, you know, the next, what I call next generation stuff, um, which is next generation applications, which is stuff where you're engaged over time, right? Stake where I've got staking rewards. I want to take the staking rewards to build up a position over there. 
um, the liquid restaking tokens where I'm additionally taking my staked atom or staked build and saying you could also slash it if the following things happen, right? That's a particular kind of orchestration, you know, structure that is about being able to, you know, that is much more powerful if it is implemented with a smart contract that can act over time, redeeming my staking rewards over time, building up some other position, and then if it if if something happens with it, being able to stake, you know, to to slash according to that other position and cover some of the kinds of use cases that are, you know, that are enormously sized in the in the eigenlayer world in ETH. Um, but you know, once you've got the right tooling, they're really straightforward to implement and deploy. Then finally, like portfolio management and cross-chain yield management, right? Being able to have automated rebalancing among, you know, stable coin yield positions in different, in different markets, including in Cosmos and eventually outside of Cosmos, right? Those are some of the things that, um, well, in theory possible, if you dedicate an entire team to one use case, it's really hard, and that's why they need an entire team to this ver to these very simple use cases. And what you can do in in Agoric that you can't do elsewhere is the you know here's some straight line code to easily do this multi stage workflow that involves five other chains, right? And now you know do the you know move assets over here, take them over there, swap them for this token, move them over there, liquid stake it, take that token, make a vault, get IST, go buy something. That sequence and process that might have conditionals or error handling behavior, you know, looks like straight line JavaScript code in Agoric and looks like a nightmare to even know what's going on on any other platform. Yes, so in answer to God's, God's Hunter's follow-up, so indeed that ability to program stuff on other chains is something, you know, th something that... IBC enables in the Cosmos ecosystem and Union and Axelar and others enable bridges out to other worlds, but being able to program that is the hard part, right? They've laid the, they've laid the roads and the roads, you know, have people hand carrying their, their assets from one place to another, but cross those in, in, in any, in any rich and complex way. And that's what, that's what we can do uniquely. And people are asking for it and people want it, right? People, people, if they're doing right now, they buy tokens and they stake them. Well, now they want to use their assets from some other chain or they want to automatically unbond their assets from some other chain. And two weeks from now, when that happens, move it over here and do a thing. And those are all really hard right now and they need to not be, right? And people, and to get out to the mainstream world, they need to not be. And that's the thing that, you know, once you get orchestration to really make these interesting chain abstraction solutions work, then it's a lot easier to approach, approach non-crypto expertise end users and provide them use cases that they care about. And yeah, thanks for that, Dean. Um, <laughs> very, a lot of detail, a lot of information to take in there. And um, but uh, also thank you for getting into answering the question as it came into the chat. Um, so I'll move on to the next one. Uh, and so I think there's uh, there can be answers from both of you here. Uh, so there's been a lot of conversation with Near and Particle Network as well as Dean meeting Vitalik. Is there anything in the works for them using Agoric orchestration? And do you have plans to follow this up? And so, Yulia, I don't know if maybe you want to give any answer toward the relationship building with these teams and sort of how we're collaborating with them there. Absolutely. So um, we were actually very happy to partner with uh, NIRV on a um, minimum of two events that were became very visible in uh, at two uh, great moments. Uh, during Austin Cost Consensus, we um, actually partnered, we sponsored together an event that we organized, Chain Abstraction Day in, uh, uh, sorry, it was called Abstract Austin. Um, mm -hmm. And then in uh, Brussels, we organized together we, uh, uh, the Chain Abstraction Day um, during the ETH CC. And um, the partnership, I think what, what it brought us was definitely positioning and visibility on the chain abstraction scene um, on a space that actually near doesn't have a bit with, with their big brand and that where we actually um, made it clear what the difference is and how um, uh, orchestration is actually um, very, it, it has very much its space 
um, in the chain abstraction uh, landscape alongside NIR's uh, solutions. Um, mm -hmm. And going forward, they, they keep continuing to, to invite us to, to events. Um, I think from a marketing perspective, it's basically a visibility partnership and a positioning, uh, strategic positioning one. Yeah, we're very and much both focused. Other... Part of the reason just for the, the you know, the, our, 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 our sort of continued co-sponsoring and partnership with NIR is we're both very much focused on, you know, how do we create value instead of merely speculative wealth? And a lot of the, the, the point about chain abstraction is it's about creating user value. And, you know, that kind of alignment is, it, you know, to, of, of how do we produce long-term value for not just, you know, crypto, but the outside world. It, it's really nice to have other people that, that see that as the sort of the long-term goal of why we're doing all of this. So. And I think what I wanted to say about more than that, the, the chain about the chain abstraction more than a marketing partnership there are other other players out there that are, are building solutions for chain abstraction like there is about 20 of them if you look at different uh layouts that try to explain the chain abstraction space when you go to an event and you see the event has been uh not just sponsored co-sponsored but all actually co-hosted uh by near and agoric uh, that actually brings our brand up. And, you know, mm -hmm. Nier is one of the top 10 chains at this moment. So um, actually have, having them invite us to co-host with them, um, having us, them invite Dean on the same stage with, with Ilya and uh, hosting panels and, and so on, it's, it's actually a, a big boost to, to us and it clarifies our position right now as at least co-leaders in the chain abstraction space. And from my, from my point of view, it's entirely appropriate, right? We really bring, you know, the meat to the table here, right? So the other thing that I will say is, is um, already it, that has clearly led to inbound and inbound that is not, not, I won't say not, outside of Cosmos that see the power of orchestration programming and would like to be able to do stuff stuff across, you know, EVM layer twos or across EVM to Solana or near to, you know, to 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 Agoric or those kinds of things. And and that will be, you know, that's already important in terms of, you know, setting our our trajectory and producing um, you know, the kinds of partnerships that we're working towards that we'll be able to talk about, you know, later Q3, hopefully, you know, and, and, and maybe Q4, but it also lays the groundwork for, you know, we roll out right now with what we, ha you know, with, with what works in, in the local space, get that experience, get them things built, and then go big out into the larger cryptoverse. You know, that's already laying the groundwork for that larger cryptoverse. Chain abstraction is about the whole Web3 space. And uh, and then it's all about orchestrating all of them. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Orchestrate uh, all so, the things. <laughs> I, I wish I had the the emoji we have for that. <laughs> um, I'll just check the uh, comment here. Would love to see inform infomercial animated video. Um, just to that point, I do want to highlight, and I'll grab the link shortly. Uh, if you haven't seen, we do have a very uh, entertaining and interactive um, infomercial animated video uh, on the Twitter page. I'll, I'll grab a link and drop it here shortly. And so uh, just want to move on to a few of the last uh, questions. Um, and then uh, so I'll start with, you know, what are Agoric's biggest weaknesses and how are you improving them? And uh, I, I think there's probably an answer from both Dean and Yulia for this indifferent. So, so um, you know, we, we, the the uh, so the big thing has been there have been some key gaps from a from a from a team point of view in DevRel's um, and in strategic and and in the at the strategic side of marketing. And from my perspective, and you know, and there's a few others that we're hiring for, but those were sort of you know hiring in order. You know, the, those gaps. And, um, uh, and, you know, we are very happy we filled them, right? You know, it's just been, and, and so, you know, that's, that's critical things. 
Then the other is, you know, this focus set of applications where we now know exactly the kinds we're looking for. And not just, you know, we want any applications. We're working with folks with applications where what we uniquely bring to the table actually addresses a business need they have. You can point at, you know, here's the value, you know, here, here, here's the value they're getting from orchestration and from the Agoric platform that addresses a need that, that, that actually brings value to people. And those things together, you know, were sort of the key gaps. Now we need to just execute on those, uh, 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 you know, on the, the, the strategy that we've made there. You know, we think we're on the right path. To add a bit to this, um, in order to, of, to, for marketing to do great, great marketing, obviously we need these experiences, these applications that, that Dean was talking about. There is a, this is a weakness across the, the whole industry, I think. It's um, time to market is long. Mm -hmm. Uh, we we have to be aware of that from from and the orchestration is actually new. Uh, although you know Dean has spoken about the the concept and the idea for since since Denver and since February, uh, we've only launched uh, the orchestration core uh, on uh, in July in mid July and uh, the API uh, right now it's happening. Um, taking it to the market, but then actually getting the applications live to market. Is, is a full sales cycle in itself plus an integration cycle. So um, one of the weaknesses is uh, definitely speed to market. And I think that it's, it's across the, the industry. And uh, we, uh, as soon as we get to, to uh, showcase, to, to launch a few of those applications, uh, we'll be fine. We'll, we'll actually be able to do proper marketing, uh, avoiding those technical, over technical uh, messages and, and marketing and uh, avoiding things that might seem too, um, too gen general or too hard to understand exactly what does it do because we'll have examples to actually showcase orchestration with. And thank you, thank you both for those answers, um, really insightful. Um, and so another uh, another question, kind of similar. Um, so, what gives you confidence that Agoric will succeed in such an incredibly competitive landscape? And Yulia, I think we'll start with you on this one. Um, I I think it starts with the enthusiasm that I see from people when they hear about orchestration, and the the nicest thing that I've heard was you guys packaged an awesome technology and have taken to market an API that every developer wants to get his hands on. And when you hear that, I actually feel like, okay, so now it's basically marketing's world to take that broad to the market and to get more people to hear about it because it looks like the, the answer is fantastic and this is how we get those leads in and Time to market is long, but we'll get those applications out. Um, so definitely that's, that's one thing that makes me enthusiastic. The other one is um, actually resilience. You have a company here on the market that has survived for, <laughs> you know, during a few winter crashes, winter, winter markets and a few crashes and um, has uh, uh, released continuously a great technology, now a product and so on. And so uh, that makes me um, enthusiastic that as soon as the market is up again and we come to the market with the goodness, uh, we'll, we'll actually be uh, surfing the right. <laughs> yeah, there was another question about, you know, what's the morale of the team and that sort of thing. And, you know, as I post as I posted earlier, right, all of us, you know, certainly care about the state of the market and and the numerous technical issues that are showing up all across the cosmos, sort of bad coincidentally, you know, unrelated issues that all sort of are compounding on each other. But, you know, but, but having people coming to us, having so much more clarity about, I mean, we know we produced a valuable technology. It's a deep technology stack that has a bunch of amazing stuff in it that we, you know, that, that we look forward to sort of, you know, having a community that cares about the technical details that we can share because, you know, a bunch of us are technologists. But having that visceral feeling from people outside that comes back and go, oh, I get it. I see how it helps me, right? You know, it's just a really positive thing. And we do, you know, internal, 
So how are we doing? How are people feeling? What are they reacting to? What are the stressors? All that kind of stuff. And so we get, you know, we 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 respond to that internally, but we also have a good sense of where people are at. And and as I said, gen, you know, the 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 um, you know generally positive outlook on where we're going as 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 our technology is maturing and our ability to target is maturing, just as people start to realize they know they need what we have. So that's that's the that's the place we want to be. And taking on that last point, Dean, when you said we know where people are, um, I'd like to thank everybody for in the community uh, for uh, answering to to JD's survey, the brand, the sentiment survey that uh, he launched on Friday, and uh, we were aware about the the moment where we're launching this survey. And again, back to the resilience, I think that it's it's good for us to to check on what the community is doing. We have great plans for, for community to, to get it much more engaged and, and to grow the community. But also we, we do see, we do take positive vibes that we got. And from, from that survey that was launched at a, at a hard moment, we've actually gotten some, some really passionate answers supporting the team and supporting our, our work. So that makes us enthusiastic and confident that mm -hmm. we will succeed. Right. And the same way we do those internal checks, you know, that's a, let's set a baseline and we will listen and respond and react and do things. And, 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 um, hopefully you will, you will, you know, you will see that the, the positive impact of that. And as somebody on the team, I do want to just echo that everything I see is all very positive sentiment with people. Everybody's very excited with Orchestration Live. Upgrade 16 going live was a big lift off of a lot of people, and we're all looking forward to what's coming next. Um, and I see a couple of questions just came up in the channel. Uh, so when do you think we can get an updated roadmap? That was also <laughs> on the list of questions. So I'll just put that out there. I don't know if I outrageously promise something will product be, you know, right now, two key product people are out, 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 uh, on, on a short vacation. So not before next week. How's that? <laughs> but yeah, I, I will apologize. That should be updated all the time. Um, well, uh, you know, we need to do better at that. We will do better at that. We've been focusing on, you know, there were some, uh, posts from Roland out to you know Twitter and on Discord of here's what the what the product roadmap looks like that went out into Q3 but it just didn't get folded back into the agoric.com roadmap page and and it should be um, so so we will we will get there and and um, uh, you know and one of the things we are doing internally is getting that info so it's easier for us to get those updates you know to happen quickly so. And then to the second question, uh, Triple PM just posted in the chat. I, I, I want to highlight that I think that this is a good question to do when uh, Roland is back and available. Um, but maybe, Dean, do you have anything you want to say sure. to the, you know, what plans options do you have for build usage? I, I guess you can read the question there. Yeah, yeah. So, um... So there, 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 there are several elements to that question. I'll first talk, talk about the IST thing. Um, so, you know, IST, IST is now largely an independent product, right? We do implementation for it, but, you know, risk is managed by an independent committee of experts. Uh, DCF is driving it. Um, and indeed, they're, they're looking for, you know, uh, they're looking for a product manager lead person to drive it even harder. Um, uh, and so, you know, so, so that's a big, what happens there is a community question and community governance thing. And a lot of that, um, you know, we, we look to DCF, uh, uh, for their, you know, census of the community and, and tracking where that is. There are logistical issues around turning on rewards for IST. For example, all the custody providers have build, but they may, but they are, if they aren't currently handling IST, then that would be a burden on them. And those are all things that can be overcome. But our focus is on orchestration. Do we, you know, with the amount still being small, and just to be clear, the amount of accumulated fees for IST is reasonable, is 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 great for the amount of IST that's out there. But IST has not yet caught on, you know, I mean, these things are exponential. So you'll know when it's caught on. And that's partly because there just hasn't been enough DeFi in the, in the Cosmos community. 
as we start to see orchestration scenarios that include IST, that could trigger growth. There's all these things that could trigger the, 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 the key growth of IST, at which point the reward stream will be meaningful and the, 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 the governance and orchestration and, or sorry, governance and implementation effort to transition to turning on those rewards, which could be turned on, but man, you want to do it. You want to socialize it. You want to make sure the custody providers know it's coming. You want it to be a number that it's worth their time uh, to deal with it and so forth. And so it just, it's one of those things where we, we, we look at it. I know DCF looks at it. I know the community looks at it occasionally and just kind of goes, you know, not worth the distraction of focusing on getting these orchestration apps out there and making real value difference to people immediately. Going back to now BLD, in the current environment, right, attention is a lot of what drives utilization or value or accrual of, of a token. We have tokenomics in our system, but that's, but the market doesn't, uh, uh, you know, that's not critical at this point to the market. It's, adoption and attention of the platform. And so to us, the primary way to engage, build, and get people to care about using it, um, you know, uh, migrating to it, building up so they can get wallets, um, voting on things, that sort of stuff, is delivering orchestration, you know, solutions and applications. And so that's our, you know, in partly, you know, as a company, we build software to solve problems. And so that's our primary approach, as well as getting the narrative engagement route or orchestration and agoric build. There's definitely, you know, DCF and others and, you know, us supporting it are looking at getting liquid stake build and, and, and various other things that will, that will directly engage uses of build. Totally in favor of that, totally supportive of that. Um, but, you know, Agoric's mission is to make people care because they care about the platform because the software enables them to do impossible things. And yeah, thank you again. That, that was a, a lot of information and uh, triple PM. I hope that that uh, <laughs> I hope that helps to answer um, sort of the the multiple questions that are factored into that one. Um, so yeah, being mindful of time, we are coming up on the hour mark. I think we've got time for one more, and if anything comes up in the chat, we can address that as well. Um, but uh, I'll put this one up for for both of you. Uh, and maybe start with Yulia because you've just joined recently, but what have been your biggest learnings working on Agoric uh, and for you it's so far? <laughs> um, I did not have time to prepare on this, so this will be very spontaneous uh, answer. Uh, mm. Aside from having my, my brain exploded by everything that I had to learn to understand the uh, orchestration and the, the complex technology that these uh, engineers bring to life. Um, my biggest learnings uh, about the space have uh, have been, well, first of all, that in a Web3, you can actually build a company that is as um, well, well run and um, ethical as in the traditional industry. Um, that, that's definitely <laughs> a, bi a big thumbs up. Um, another learning th that I'm, I'm seeing right now is that um, we live in a small bubble. We, we are a small, a small uh, tribe of power users of DeFi. And in order to, to actually bring to, to mainstream, we have to get out of this and build build experiences that are actually for the main users. So uh, with, with uh, orchestration and with chain abstraction, Dean and I go off very often through this exercise of uh, uh, changing our marketing and saying, we are not building for developers only. Uh, we are building tools for developers to enable things for users. And, and I think that this is something that um, the crypto guys Everybody in this space needs to understand that Web3 will not survive if we don't get utility to the market and the building for, for the end users uh, and not just for the crypto tigers out there. Mm -hmm. Let me, leveraging on your point about the, the um, 
for the end user, you know, I was talking to Hasib of Dragonfly Capital and Chris Berniski and, you know, very, you know, investors that have a non-technical focus and, you know, Chain abstraction is a key user scenario. Orchestration makes it possible to implement that, but it's easy for that to slide into a primary message for the devs. And Hasib's point was, yeah, 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 whatever, all this dev stuff. The value of orchestration to users is that we create, you know, we get rid of all the clicky, 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 right? You know, where you have to sign a gazillion transactions to do something that ought to be simple, right? And so that, you know, that seamless applications across multiple chains, one click or one authorization to say, yes, do this for me, or I can sign up for a subscription and that's going to do a monthly thing over two years. And it's one approval, not every transaction. I need to go sign another thing in a ledger and unlock this tiny thing with my little fingers, right? You know, that, that ability to do use cases that end users can understand instead of signatures that they're expected to sign blindly on a device they can barely use, right? The, that is what will get us to a future where all this stuff matters. And it's just so exciting, you know, focusing orchestration where that's the user experience it delivers and it really does improve what users can expect. That's, you know, that's, that's where orchestration steps up with chain abstraction as being, you know, what, what solves the future here. And yeah, so um, with that, uh, as I said, we're, we'll close out on this one. And um, so I want to both just first thank Dean, Yulia, both of you for your time. Uh, and, uh, and then also thank the community for asking such good questions. And Dean, I see you raise your hand. Oh, I just saw a good follow up from, from, from uh, Triple PM. Uh, uh, who, who had many great questions. So I will add that. So, so when we say consumer, we really mean the billions of people out there. Orchestration, the primary you know, recipient or client of that is developers so they can build their applications, right? So it enables, you know, it, it's, it's, the, it's the layer that enables simply, you know, bu building simple user experiences that span chains. People then need to build and deliver those simple user experiences to consumers, to, to people that are, you know, initially it's the, you know, a uh, few hundred thousand users of crypto on a regular basis to be able to, that want to do more and more complex things. We will, in fact, focus and deliver solutions there first because that gets adoption and leverage and connectivity and, and activity and various other things. But the goal is it also enables simple solutions to real consumers, right, where I can, you know, buy a ticket and I'm going to show it at the gate with a QR code and I don't, I don't really care that it's web three underneath, right? And that, you know, and it's sloshed around across multiple chains. What I care about is I can resell that ticket and the artist gets some of the scrape, right? You know, some of the, the, the value that I got reselling the ticket if I end up having to do that, right? You know, those kinds of things that are end user scenarios that are multi-billion dollar markets, value to the user experience in a way that's largely transparent to the user, but man, making that simple requires a lot of sophistication underneath, and that's what orchestration brings. And on that, Yulia, do you have anything you want to add as a closing thought? Well, I think I wanted to thank the audience and to actually launch a message that um, to meet us in in person to our our DevRel team that you were asking about and Dean uh, will be present at Token 2049 in Singapore and please do support us in uh, uh, sending our way projects and people that will be present there to meet to come and speak to us in person and to actually build together. that that uh poll that uh, andy has <laughs> <laughs> yes and i can uh, uh that's yeah there's the link to it there from dean and then yeah uh, i'll uh, i'll close out with a couple of things one you already mentioned it there is a community sentiment survey if you haven't done so please uh please do take the time to fill it out it'll only take you a couple of minutes and um it's a, just an opportunity to share your feedback with us and there are opportunities for some Agoric swag uh, for submitting those. And then uh, also tune in to our next community call on Twitter or X on Thursday this week. And then um, stay tuned for an update. We will address the, there are some questions that weren't answered today, 
and will that will turn to Roland for in a follow-up AMA that'll be a little more on the product uh, and platform side of things. Um, and so, yeah, thank you again, Dean and Yulia, for your time answering all these questions. And once again, thank you to the community for asking such great questions. And I'll see you all online and have a good rest of your day.